This is problem number 56 of the Sewer Calculus 8th edition, section 2.6. Make a rough sketch of the curve y equals x to the n, if n is an integer, for the following five cases. i, n is equal to 0, uh, 2i, n is greater than 0, or n, for n is odd, 3i, n is greater than 0, for n is even, uh, 4, n is less than 0, for n is odd, and 5, n is less than zero, or n is even. Uh, for the first case, we have, for the first part, n equals zero. If we have the function y equals x to the zero power, that is a constant value. And then a function that would look like that, it may look like a straight line just like this, a horizontal line. And this would be y equals uh, some constant. So that's the first example. If n is odd, uh, the function would be symmetric about the origin. So something such as this maybe. One more time. Uh, is what the function would look like for part two. n is greater than zero, n is odd. And that's a rough sketch for that curve. If n is greater than zero and n is even, it would be symmetric about the y-axis. So maybe something like a parabola. That would be a good example. For part three, for parts four and five, we have n is great, less than zero. Uh, if n is odd, it may look like this. Where there is a clear asymptote at x equals to zero. Uh, for n is odd, all the points in the positive domain are in the positive positive domain, plus plus. And in the negative domain, they're all in the negative domain. For y, negative x, negative y, positive x, positive y. And for the fifth graph, if n is even, uh, all the points are positive. And there's still that asymptote at x equals zero. So this is a rough sketch of all the five cases. And now we proceed to answer each of these limits per case. Uh, and we'll work on them one by one. For the first curve, y equals to a constant as x approaches zero from the right. Um, the and well, actually in this case, because n is zero, it's not just a constant, it is exactly one for this one specific case. So this would be y equals one, for example. That is the specific graph we're looking at. So the limit is y approaches, x approaches zero on the right of x to the n is exactly equal to one. If you approach zero from the left for x to the n, which is this graph, it is also equal to 1. Uh, if, for part C, if you're approaching infinity for this graph, you are approaching 1. Because it is constant, all of the limits will be the same as x approaches negative infinity. It will also be 1. And that's for the first graph. For the second graph, for the second case, if n is greater than zero and n is odd. As x approaches zero for this function from the right, the limit is equal to zero. If x approaches zero from the left, it is also equal to zero. As we can tell, it goes towards the origin. For the limit as x approaches infinity for part c, we see that the graph approaches positive infinity. And as x approaches negative infinity for this odd function where n is greater than zero, it approaches negative infinity. For this third graph, n is greater than zero and n is even, we will have the same results as the second case, except for the last limit. As we approach zero from the right for part a, the value of the function is equal to zero of the limit. The limit as x approaches zero from the left is also zero. If we approach infinity for part c, 
the function for part three, approaches positive infinity. And as x approaches negative infinity for part d, it also approaches positive infinity for this third case. For the fourth case, the limit as x approaches zero from the right for part a is positive infinity as we as we see. As we approach zero from the right, there's this vertical asymptote, and the function approaches a very large positive number. For part B, the limit as x approaches zero from the left. We see that for this fourth case, where n is less than zero and it is odd, that the function approaches negative infinity. For part C, as x approaches infinity, we see that the function gets closer and closer to the x-axis, but never reaches it, which means that this function approaches zero uh, as x approaches infinity. And this is also the case for part D, as the limit approaches, for the limit as x approaches negative infinity, the function also approaches zero. Finally, for the last case, n is less than zero, for n is even, uh, we will have almost the same results, except for the second limit. So first, part a, limit as x approaches zero from the right, and that is po positive infinity, just like the previous case. Second limit for part b, the limit as x approaches zero from the left is also positive infinity for this case. As we see that both from the left and the right approaching zero, it reaches positive infinity. For part C, limit as x approaches infinity, we see that the function approaches the x-axis, therefore it approaches zero. And this is also the case for part D, the limit as x approaches negative infinity of the function x to the n also approaches zero. And these are all the solutions to all these limits for these five cases uh, presented in this problem.